projects, but I would say 95% of integration in an enterprise is FTP flat five. And so we have... Even to this day. <laughs> even to this day. And it's difficult. Let me, I could go off on an entire tangent on this because it's very difficult to get away from this type of architecture. I mean, your whole infrastructure, your whole in integration infrastructure is based off of FTP and flat file. So there's are two different adapters, just so you know. I mean, obviously, flat file communication oftentimes happens over FTP, mm -hmm. but the FPT, FTP adapter will listen in, into a certain directory to see if uh -huh. files are coming. File just says push it over here, and then it's up to you to figure out how to process that okay. file. So just so you're clear, and I would say both these adapters together, and maybe the flat file one is the one used most often, because say in this scenario, you're inside of a, we'll talk about cloud a little bit later, but it's almost like this whole scenario is inside of a private cloud, if you will, because it's mm -hmm. inside of one business, right? right? A lot of people, although I've seen scenarios, they wouldn't want to open up a port to, to, the, to the world in order to the customers and vendors and mm -hmm. outside partners that need to integrate. I mean, you have to realize that this scenario I would, is a private cloud. And in that scenario, you have control over what people are doing. So you can just talk to MQ series. Now, so I have actually seen people open up ports in MQ series and right, then right. vendors or customers, mm -hmm. but a lot of people are opposed to doing that. And that's why we see the FTP and flat file integration, because it's much easier to just pump out something. You can put a file, file in there or put out a file. Yeah, and, and then somebody either grabs it or you send it to right, them. Right. I mean, so, so that's why we see a lot of people using FTP and flat file. Also, we see a lot of people using FTP and flat file because, say, even 15 years ago, we all know that a lot of this technology wasn't there. Web services was its mm -hmm. infancy. No, no one even talked about application adapters. No one really knew how to integrate into GMS. They used it internally. So people, when they look to do integration, even within an enterprise, not outside an enterprise, FTP or flat file was really the first option. So what happens is that all this infrastructure, as we know, because one, in, in part of the fir first book I did with PACT was Oracle Modernization Solutions, which is all mm -hmm. talking about legacy systems. If you look at legacy systems from 30 years ago, they're still in place today. Right. Because yes. they work. <laughs> <laughs> and does someone really want to go out there and, and redo this whole FTP file integration scenario? Or in another case, and I've, this is, this is a reality for a mortgage banking application, they receive 1,400 different flat file formats. Are you going to go out to 1,400 different people that send you this and say, by the way, we're going to change everything up? <laughs> you know, a lot of people talk about XML. And we're going to do XML, and maybe we're going to do web services. XML, and, and to a degree, if you look at the continuum, you, you do flat files, and then maybe you move to XML, and then maybe you move to web services, right? Well, people are sort of stuck right here. Because imagine you going out to 1,400 vendors or whatever it is and say, hey, by the way, you're going to change your format to conform <laughs> to the way we're going to do business now. And secondly, by the way, instead of FTPing that file to me or even emailing that file to me, you know, you're going to have to send that over a, a SOAP message over a specialized link. And they're going to be like, we're not going to do that. So in a lot of cases with integration, you don't have the luxury of